Yo, what's the deal? It's Big Grind, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. I just woke up, clear 150, shit was easy. Any bitch know I'm a turn, it's gonna be hard for them to leave me. If you broke, I won't answer, gonna be hard. Alright, we got Big Grind jumping off the porch with us today. Yes, sir, yes, sir. How you feeling today, gang? I'm alright, I'm well. How you feeling? Feeling good, man, feeling cool. How I feel to be in the city of Atlanta? This is my first time actually being here for a couple days. Like last time I came, I just like drove through here, but mm. I'm fucking with it though. It's a nice little vibe for sure. That's yeah, real. How different would you say it is from the city of Harvey? Totally different. It's totally different. But you know, I'm pretty sure y'all got some, Atlanta got some, you know, fucked up hoods and shit out here, like hella abandoned cribs and shit. So. Same shit for real. But it, it's like a little more open out here. That's real. How would you describe coming up in Harvey, Illinois? It was rough, for real. You don't know who to trust. Everybody was cool. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, shit happens as you get older and it's like everybody just drift away from each other. But, you know, just gotta keep going, man. Shit like everywhere else, for real. How would you describe the way of life, the culture, and the people of Harvey? It's grimy, for sure. It's grimy as hell at the curb. But, like, the culture, like, you know, it's just some regular hood shit, for real. It's fucked up at the curb. How often would you say it gets compared to the city of Chicago? A lot of niggas from the city don't like Harvey. They they be like, you know what I'm saying? When they when they come to saying Chicago, they don't say Harvey a part of Chicago. Which is cool, cause we the South Suburbs and we got all that shit out there. So, you know, it don't make us no difference. So, how would you describe your childhood coming up? It's cool, most of the part. I got both my parents in my life, but you know, coming up around that time. You got peers and shit, and you know, sometimes your parents could tell you shit and you do the others just because your peers doing it and you think it's cool, you know what I'm saying? But as you get older, you see everything that they was trying to tell you, they wasn't doing nothing but putting you on game ahead of time, for real. So at what point would you say you jumped off the horse? Like 13, 14, just doing wild shit. Stupid shit for real. Now that I'm grown, it was a lot of stupid shit, but you know, it was fun though. It's fun when you that age, you know, when you get older and got priorities and shit. It's like, you look back on it like, man, that shit was dumb for real, you know? For sure. What type of shit you can say you've been through or seen from jumping off the porch at an early age of 13? I done seen motherfuckers get hit up. I done seen family do snake shit to family. I done seen homies, girls messing with the homies. I done seen a lot of shit, man. That's crazy. So what would you say is the biggest lesson of all that you learned? Shit, I, honestly, you just gotta really take care of yourself and then once you set and straight, reach back for who you can reach back for. Everybody ain't gonna be able to come. Some people don't get that, some people do, you know? No, that's real. What would you say you discovered your passions for music? Early, it's early. I remember making a, a motherfucking song to, uh, you know, that, remember that Fat Joe and Lil Wayne song, Make It Rain? I yeah. had made a song to that. I probably was like fucking 10 years old at the time. And we had like a little school project coming up and I rehearsed it at the school project and I had my little pencil beating on the decks and shit. Mm. But when I was done rehearsing it, everybody was clapping. And that was like at 10 years old. Then I just started putting beats on and just rapping and shit. Yeah. I started off doing it over the hottest songs that's out. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, I can't keep doing that. I got to get my own like style and my own originality. So that's when I started just doing other beats that motherfucker send me or I'll go on YouTube and get beats and shit. That's real. Walk us through your first studio session. What was that moment like and what was it like? My first studio session was with my homie. He had a studio in his crib. And 
We was just kicking it. We used to get high and shit, go there after school. I write raps at school just because I know I'm going to Broski crib after school. And we was young as hell. Man. And he was rapping with me, but he was like mixing it for us too. So he was like the rapper and the engineer. But that shit was turned though because we had songs in motherfucking high school that everybody was coming back to school singing and shit. That's wild. What was the first song you remember? It was me and my homie Boss Dub. It was Dead Presidents. It was a song called Dead Presidents. I was like, I was like 15 when I first got recorded. But like, I do like little raps, like make a ride over a Gucci or Waka Flocka beat and have somebody filming me off an old school camera. And I just write the lyrics and upload it. So I was doing that at first before I actually got into the studio and making a, putting a, song on a track and now you able to hear it on a CD or a flash drive or whatever we had, USBs and shit back in the day. That's real. At what point would you say you decided in life you wanted to take it serious? I've been wanting to take this shit serious since I was like 16. I be getting overlooked though, you know, it be a lot of discrepancies. People got their own reasons why they don't fuck with me and shit, but most motherfuckers, you know, don't even share the music, but I know they listening to that shit. This is too hard for you not even to, you know, put an ear to the shit. And most niggas know I ain't lying, I ain't lying at all. So, you know, that's gonna have niggas fucking with me regardless. But I've been serious about this shit. But now I'm getting more serious. I'm, it's like I found out what I was doing wrong, and now I'm on top of that shit now. What would you say you learned along the way that was a lesson? Like you said, you know what you're doing wrong. What would you say with some of those lessons you had to learn? I was being cheap. Wanted to just spend my money on other shit that wasn't really benefiting me, you know? And just got to really like, you know, it's this shit about like marketing nowadays because you could have a good song, but if you don't market it right, it's like a waste of time. And I, every time I went to the studio, as far as when I was doing my own music, I'm paying for every session. So even when I ain't hash it, I'm going out, hitting licks, doing stupid shit, scraping up money so I can go to the studio and make a song type shit. So it's just, I got to market this shit now. So now it's like, I know what I'm doing now. Tunnel vision is on. That's real. So let's talk about that new project you got out. Clarity of Speech 2. Yeah, that's, it's the sequel to the first one, but this one going crazier. For sure. What's it's, something you can say you learned from the first one that you had to get right for the second one? It's just basically like, don't change. Just keep being raw with this shit. You know, find a nice beat. I always find good beats. That's gonna get a motherfucker listening. I'll back the beat. And then plus you hearing what I'm saying and how I'm putting my words together. It's just like, yeah, okay. He talking that shit. Walk us through your writing process. What is it like creating a song for you that way? Well, I, could, I could write a song in 20 minutes. Literally 20 minutes. I don't freestyle. I don't punch in and out. Niggas be on here capping and shit, but I ain't finna cap to you. I literally write everything that y'all hear. I write it because I feel like I could deliver it better with me writing it rather than me coming off the dome saying shit. If I'm sitting down putting, it, putting these words together, you know, it'd be like certain words you're not gonna be able to put together if you just hit freestyling off the top. But if not sitting right, that shit then became so easy to me, bro. Literally, I could do a tape two weeks, and that's how I record. I record, I make eight songs, call an engineer, book a four hour studio, knock them eight songs out. Make eight more songs, call them again, book another four hour studio, knock them eight songs out. That's a 16 tape project. Wait on the mix and the mastering to come back. That's like two, three weeks. It's two months. I got a project ready to drop. That's real. It's cold. How did you learn to develop such work ethic? <sighs> really just knowing that it's a lot of motherfuckers where I come from that rap. I got to stand out. So my work ethic is going to make me stand out and steady being consistent. It's niggas that I know that was raw as hell and they stopped because I guess they felt they wasn't getting nowhere. So I'm still going. Ain't no stopping. 
All it's gonna take is for one motherfucker to hear one thing and it's over with. But I ain't stopping though. I don't even know that shit ain't in my vocabulary. Quitting? Mm mm. What's one thing you would say you want most importantly from your career? I want my music to touch people that's going through hard times. And throughout all the hard times and hard shit you've been through, you put this music on and this music kind of like ease it. It gets you through the time. It's not going to stop what you're going through, but it like ease it for you and get you through the time and, you know, make you feel and look forward to waking up the next day and try to make something happen. That's real. Would you say it's hard to make it out of Harvey, Illinois? Yeah, but nah. Yeah, but nah, because we got some, some turn rappers out there. But it's like, I feel like they just be stopping. You feel me? Fat Money, he keep going. He be giving me the motivation. I got to keep going. You know, he hard as fuck. I got to keep going. Broski be going. So I just got to keep going. That's my motto. You got to keep going, man. No matter who try to knock you down, you got to keep going, bro. You can't stop because that moment you stop, somebody else going to pass you up. You got to think of how many else niggas doing this shit, and they got the mindset to keep going. So once you stop, another nigga done up, bad past you because you stopped and played. No, that's real. What would you say is next for Big Grind? Well, that's for Big Grind. I got the clarity of speech, too. Deluxe coming. This shit, I'm in a different bag with this one. Crazy. You could tell I'm in a whole different bag with it. I ain't gonna give them too many songs because it's a deluxe, but I'm coming, man. Y'all just stay watching, man. I swear to God, I'm coming. Hey, so, uh, how'd you come up with the name Big Grind? Big Grind. So, first, <clears throat> me and my homie had like a little group called GOGL, and it's still for Grind to Get Lost. Feel me? So, as I got older, you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker branched off, and I'm like, I gotta keep the grind, cause that's all the fuck I know, you know? So I'm like, all right, now I'm grown and shit, now I'm big grind, you know? I ain't never heard of nobody with that name too, so I'm like, bet, I'm gonna take on that name. Cause they know me from G-O-G-L type shit, grind and get lost to people who do know me. So now it's like I just transitioned into big grind as I got bigger and better with the shit. Nah, that's a real spill. So how did you come up with the song title, She Can't Stand The Way I Am? Just basically, you know, going through shit with the lady, bitches, homies, you know what I'm saying? This shit is like, you know, I had to really like, she can't stand the way I am. Like, she love me, but it's just like, I'm me, you know what I'm saying? I'm stuck in my way, so she love me, but she can't stand the way I am. But she love me enough to stay with me, you know what I'm saying? And watch me grow, so that's where that shit came from. And I was just in my bag, I heard the beat. It was like a New York drill type beat. And you know, I know what they be doing on them motherfuckers. I'm like, I'm gonna do the total opposite. I'm not even from New York. I fuck with New York though. And I'm like, ah, I ain't bad, I'm in my... I just went crazy. I made that song in like 20 minutes, bro. That shit was easy. That's real. How does it make you feel to know that you can deliver such, you know, relatable songs in a short time span like that? It let me know that there's more to this shit. I got a real... I got a real dream and a goal I'm trying to reach, so it's definitely more to this shit. So once I know I'm, I just made a hit in 20 minutes, what else is in store for me, you know? I'm, oh yeah, this ain't shit, this just a little bit. So when people be already head going over one song, I be like, man, that shit sound old. I've been listening to that. I, didn't, I, I need to come up with something new because it's going to get old eventually. No, for sure. How often would you say it is to put new music out for fans so they don't get tired of what you just put out? Like you said, you listening to some music. It might be all to you. It's new to them though. For sure. So how, like, how do you know when to stay consistent and when it's time to drop a new song and when it's time to shoot a new video and when it's time to do a new photo shoot? Okay, so I actually feel like when I get tired of it, that's when it's time for me to do something new. And most of the time, the artist is gonna get tired of his music way before the fans. So once I feel like I done heard this song like a hundred times now, like I gotta make something similar but harder than this. So once I get tired of the music, 
which be before I even put the project out, I be tired of the music. Cause I'm round around listening to the shit already. The whole tape, I'm listening to it cause I'm, you know what I'm saying? I make the shit. So I'm listening to it. So it become new to me once I release it on all platforms. And now I'm letting everybody hear this shit except for the people who are around me daily. That shit become brand new again. So it feel like I just made the song again, for real. Nah, oh, that's cool. What would you say it would take for you to sign to a major label situation? I gotta come with some cheese, man. Cause I, ain't, I ain't easy going over no money. I know how to make money. I know how to maintain money. I, I want like a distribution deal, like where they'll give me some money to start my own label. And, and I'ma just show them, you know what I'm saying? What I'm worth from that is up. Cause I know a lot of homies that that's a way that I could reach back for my niggas who I know cold and they ain't getting no spotlight on them, you know? Once I get that platform and that shine on me, I need, uh, I'm gonna pass it right off to them. Cause they actually hard, you know? It's just they ain't got the recognition that. So I know once other people hear this shit like I'm hearing it, my homie gonna blow, it's over with. What would you say some of the pros and cons of being an independent artist? The pros is the money. You get to keep the bread, most of the bread. The cons is you don't got no label behind you pushing this shit to the maximum. You got to do it with your own budget. You know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta make sure you get some money because, you know, marketing and shit, that shit costs. So niggas don't be knowing that, you know what I'm saying? They go back jewelry and all that extra shit. And they just not even signed. Motherfucker don't even really know him yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm motherfucker wonder like, damn, I ain't going nowhere. You got to really put that shit into some marketing and get your shit out there. So now you got that wider and you could do what you want to do once you do that. For real. You just got to market yourself. That's the best thing I did was invest in myself. What's some of the other beneficial things you can say you learned along the way? Keep going, no matter, everybody not gonna like your music. Everybody not gonna like your song. There's gonna be some songs that people hate. It's gonna be some songs that people love. You know, you just gotta keep putting it out there. You gotta stay consistent, keep making the music. Cause eventually, the people who don't like that shit, they gonna start falling in line and liking that shit like everybody else. It's just, you can't help but to like some shit you steady seeing in your face and you seeing people fuck with. You can try to turn your head and act like you don't hear that shit all you want, buddy. You gonna hear that shit. No bullshit. You go ahead. What would you say when you creating a project, right? Mm -hmm. How you know when it's complete? A lot of people might undersell the project, you know, mm -hmm. might sell it short. A lot of people might over report on the project. You know what I mean? How do you know when the project is just complete? Enough? Yeah. All right, so. When my engineer sent me back the mixed and the master versions, okay, now I sit down and listen to all 16 songs. It uh, Most projects I do be 16 or better. So it'll take me like two weeks to see how I want to, you know what I'm saying, title this shit from the first song all the way to the last song. So I sit and listen, and I'm like, which one to sound hard coming right after this type shit? You know what I'm saying? And it be just like that. It don't take me long, for real. Just got to just put the shit out, man. And it should give me more motivation and more. I keep going. The people that do support me, I got support. And then the people that hate me, you know, that shit motivate me to keep going, you know? Put this shit in their face, whether they like it or not. Straight up. So besides music, what's some of the other revenues and income you want to lock in on? I want to lock in on some business management. I want to run. I want to run me a club slash strip club, right? And I want to get light and shine to artists that's not seen or heard. That's actually nice. But I want to have it like a club where the artists come and I book other big performers slash strip club with all the bitches in there, and it's just a, it's just like an all in one. That motherfucker turn. Every day. Hey, what you gonna name it? See that now? I gotta think about that. I don't okay. even know what I'm gonna name it. It gotta be something extraordinary though that catch a motherfucker attention. Like, let's go to, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Big grinds, fun time. Mm -hmm. 
Nah, man, I don't think I would do it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably sit down with my lady and do it, man, because she'd be, think, she'd be coming up with some crazy ideas as far as names, process, and shit, so. That's real. She'd be hard with it. How important is fatherhood to you? Man, fatherhood, the best thing that ever happened to me. <coughs> my father was there. My father, a real nigga, he's still here right now. I see the benefits and the up and up of having a father, bro, for real. Because shit, he told me that I know now and I'm instilling in my children, man, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. He gave me so much knowledge, it was just like, you know, now I'm older, I see what you was talking about, Pop. I love the fuck out you. I'm grateful you, st I'm still a nigga that can say that my father was in my life and he's still in my life, you know? I got homies that father died early and they wasn't there for the crucial part of their life, you know what I'm saying? And I got homies that father just wasn't never in their life, like they don't even know their father. So for me, having a father, that shit hit different to me, bro. For real, for real, because can't too many people say that, you know, they still got their father in their life or they locked in with their father how I am. Oh, that's real. Any last words and shout outs? Uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to my engineer, man, Subi, man. He coming with good quality, good content on the music. He keeping that shit sounding good. I want to shout out my kids, my lady, all my supporters, my homies, my real niggas, man, my parents. And most importantly, I want to shout out God, man. Thank you for making this shit happen for me, man. Because without him, I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't even have this ambition, for real. Real yeah, still, man. Big grind. We appreciate having you on the porch with us today, gang. Yes, sir. I just woke up clear 150, shit was easy. Any bitch know I'm turnt, it's going to be hard for them to leave me. If you broke, I won't answer. going to be hard for you to squeeze me. Matter of fact, change my name.